Now when someone comes to you and tells you the Prophet married nine years old, Aisha, what would your response be? Sorry? It was normal for the time. And then they will ask you to prove it. And then what will you do? Take them to the sources and tell them, go and read the histories, social histories of humanity. Pick up any book and see the ages of consent, even in Britain. One convenient reference you can give is this one. William Blackstone, Commentaries on the Big English Law. Remember this, William Blackstone, Commentaries on the English Law. The legal age of marriage is seven in England, as late as 1867. That's it. Okay, so to summarize everything, number one, hadith of Aisha is not untrustworthy, it is authentic, there is no doubt that Aisha said what she said, she was nine when the Prophet consummated marriage, so you don't need to throw away the baby with the bath, uh, uh, bath water, right, you don't need to do away with your literature, your hadith literature, it is powerfully preserved, do not doubt any hadith of Bukhari that comes with a chain. Any hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari with a chain, do not doubt it and don't try to water it down. Don't start to change it because you don't know how to defend it. You don't know what the context is. You don't know what the commentaries are. You don't have the knowledge to understand it. If you are finding it difficult to fathom, then it's your knowledge. It's your lack of knowledge and intellectual ability to understand it. There's nothing wrong with the literature, right? And you saw a demonstration of that today. Do you agree? Okay. So... Are we obliged to do it today? Are we obliged to get married to nine years old? Because some people will now come back, having heard all of that, they will say, but your prophet is a model for you until eternity. He is rahmatullahi alameen. He is a mercy for uh, all the worlds and you have to follow him until the day of judgment. So you should be getting married to nine and ten years old girls. No, no, because we tell them our prophet rode camels to Makkah. And if we did that today, our Prophet would be telling us, are you mad? If the Prophet was here today, do you think he would choose to go on camel? If the Prophet wanted to go for Hajj in 2019, he was in Cape Town. Huh? If he happened to be in Cape Town, we're not so fortunate to have him among us. Uh, but Allah has blessed us with, uh, with other things. You know, we, Rasulullah said, uh, my brothers who will come after. And the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, the ones who were around him, are we not your brothers? He said, you're my companions. But those people who will come after me, they, they haven't seen me and yet they will love me and they will believe in, me. believe in me. They are my brothers. Allahu Akbar. And a good one of them, a good one of them will have the reward equal to 50 good ones of you. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, the, 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 the fact that we don't have his company, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but that doesn't mean we cannot have the reward and the honor to love him and to be with him on the day of judgment or after we die, right? And there are many ways to do it. One of the ways to, is to care for an orphan. The Prophet said, I am the one who takes care of an orphan will be in paradise like this. You can be with the Prophet after you die on the day of judgment, taking care of her. My mother-in-law died just yesterday, rahmatullahi alayha, and I'm traveling to London uh, tonight uh, I had to cut my trip short, but alhamdulillah, most of the work is done. My lectures are finished now. So she took care of orphans. Specifically, we know a family. They were orphans. She bought a house for them. She put the entire family in the house. She's not here today, so I'm not showing off for her. I'm not the one doing it, so there's no showing off, right? She did it. So I'm telling you this to encourage you. And wallahi... There are signs we can see that that was a special woman. The amount of condolences and the amount of prayers coming our way from all around the world is unbelievable. The amount of acceptance Allah gave her. She died in Ramadan. She was fine walking around. I left her two, three days ago in London. Walking around. I spoke to her smiling, walking. And before Ramadan, doctors have said, you will die soon. Right? And she was walking around. We thought she may take three months, four months. But in Ramadan... This is how she deteriorated. As if Allah wanted to take her in Ramadan. Allah wanted it because she was special. So Rasulullah told us, he gave us these incentives and she took advantage of one of them, orphans. And I believe, inshallah, if that deed is accepted, she, that alone will take her to Jannah. Ameen, inshallah. That alone will take her to Jannah. So we, we're not obliged to do it today because the Prophet, it is the pro same Prophet, Muhammad who taught us to be very 
be sensitive of the cultural norms of the people you live with. How? There's a report from the Prophet ﷺ. I have to end very soon so that we can take some questions and when leave for the airport. Um, the Prophet ﷺ said to Aisha radiallahu anha in Makkah that, Oh Aisha, if it was not for your people, who? Aisha's people. Who were they? They were also the Prophet's people, Qurayshis. So he's making a point here. If it was not for your people, Aisha, your tribe, Quraysh, I would bring the door of the Kaaba down. At the moment, where is the door? It's seven feet above, right? Yes? The Prophet wanted to bring the door down. But he didn't do it. He didn't do it. Why? Why? It was perfectly halal for him to do it. He wanted to do it, but he abstained. Why? To avoid controversy. To avoid unnecessary controversy. Because if he tried to do it, the Meccans, the Qureshis, they would have had a problem with it. So Prophet knew his situation well. He said, Aisha, if it wasn't for your people, I would have brought the door of the Kaaba down. Right? So what lesson do we learn from this? Maslaha and Mafsada. The concept of Maslaha and Mafsada. That when you live in a society, you have to consider their norms. You have to be very insensitive. Right? Not everything the Prophet ﷺ did is sunnah. Not everything he did was sunnah. It may be for that time, for that specific situation. Sunnah is something he did consistently, continuously. Yes, he did certain actions to highlight that it is perfectly halal to do it. So if you were to get married, like previously Muslims did, to younger women, as soon as they hit the age of puberty, the Prophet was defining what is halal and what is haram. So the Prophet ﷺ came to highlight, to clarify what is halal and haram. So when Jibrail came to determine the times of salah, what did he do? He came at the early time and he came at the latter time. Only for Maghrib he came one time. So Jibrail did this for what reason? So that Muslims can understand there's an early time for each and every single salah and there's a latter time. You have to pray your salah within that time, right? Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ was sent as a model. Right? So he came as a model. So he married a very, um, you know, uh, not very, but uh, an older woman than him himself. Khadija radiallahu anha, she was uh, older than him. Right? She was not, of course, she was young for her age at that time, 40 years old. And uh, Prophet ﷺ was 25. So here he is teaching his ummah that it is perfectly valid, per perfectly fine for you to get married to older women, right? Likewise, he got married to Aisha as soon as she reached that age of puberty, nine, okay? Uh, so that he can highlight for his ummah that this is the minimum. This is the minimum, that's the maximum. But do we have to do it today? No, we don't have to do it today because expectations, social norms have changed, changed so we don't have to ride camels today, yeah? We don't have to... Uh, you know, draw water from wells today, right? You can do that right today, yeah? How many of you would you do that today? Go, you need water, go and draw water from well because in the time of the Prophet, you love the Prophet so much that you want to do it like that, right? The Prophet will tell you what's wrong with you. What's wrong with you, right? Prophet ﷺ moved with the times. He taught us to move with the times. We do not change our morality. We do not change our ethics. We do not abandon our literature, our theology, but we move with the times and we consider the norms of the times we live in and the people we live, uh, live with. Thank you so much for listening. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.